Welcome to a video on Code Tech and Tutorials. My name is Matt. I will be your host today and I am going to show you how to do the native unit tests on your C++ static libraries. So I'm just going to set up a basic example and go through it and hopefully that helps you all out. So I've opened Visual Studio. I get the default project thing. I'm going to click create a new project. This is just Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition updated as of today. There's the date and time. It's often handy to know when a tutorial was done because you can figure out versions better. Just want to do an empty, well, we could even do a static library. Let's just start out with a static library. So we're not doing the universal Windows one, just the plain old C++ static library. So let's go ahead and we'll name it uh, the, the usual test or the usual example people give is math because math uh, functions are easy to put into a static library. So we could go with that. Maybe we'll be a little more specific and we'll say math stuff. That's not a little more specific, whatever. I'm going with it. All right, so I got my location where I like it. You put yours where you like it, of course, and just click create. It pre-generated us some headers and some source files. And the only one I really want to look at is this math stuff function. So this is an example of a library function, it says, defines functions for the static library. So if we go to this math stuff and right click on it and go to properties, we'll see that it is a static library configuration type. Oops, I've changed it. Static library. So the static library doesn't run on its own. Even if I hit play, it's going to come up with a thing that says, what are you doing? There it is. Unable to start program. It's not a valid Win32 application. So static libraries, just in case uh, you don't know, I'm going to try to over explain rather than under explain. Static libraries aren't ran on their own. They're usually linked to another program. The actual application or executable, when it's compiled, you link this library to it. That way you can get its functionality and use it in your code and stuff. This doesn't do anything. We'll just do, we'll make a uh, int uh, add. We'll just make a plain old add and it's just going to take, so it's just going to be an integer adder. It's not going to be anything too fancy. And of course we want to design it. It's just going to return. And of course these need to be different. Num1, num2. This is uh, going to get the job done, but of course you could do all sorts of things to make it a little more efficient, etc. So we'll do an add and we'll do a subtract. Just put those right in there. I guess we could make a comment here that says it. Subtract uh, num2 from num1. And that might pop up in our editor and tell us. So that could be handy for later. Let's, let's just gonna do, let's just put a little comment there. All right, so now we've got enough to have a couple functions that we can just test the, the basic functionality of, but how do we make our tests? And that's where the real subject of this video comes in. And I'm going to go to this top solution here, right click and do a add new project. So that's what you want to do. You basically want to add a new project in your solution. Uh, there's other ways to do it too. I think you can do it right here at the end file, add new project. So you can do it any of those ways. And you want to get to this add a new project and look for native unit test project. You'll see it looks like this. And it's uh, to write C++ unit test using the native Microsoft CPP unit test framework. So this is the Microsoft CPP unit test framework. And that's what we're going to look at. There's a lot of different test frameworks out there. Catch2 is a popular one. Google test is another popular one. This is the Microsoft CPP unit test framework that just comes with Visual Studio and is generically good enough to be fine for your stuff if uh, this is what you're using. All right, so once a name for our, our test, we'll just do unit tests, basic math, we'll do basic math. That's fine. I actually meant to have my camera on. I had to plug in my light, okay. There we go. All right. Uh, so we're looking at this new 
unit test basic math. And to run this, we basically go up to the top here and go to tests and run all tests. It doesn't let us right now because I think we need to compile first, or maybe we just need to add a test method. Well, if we want to test out these functions, we'll do some basic asserts. So we'll do assert. I am missing a few things on purpose. I just want to show you the basics of what you need to do. Okay, so in this, yeah, I'm in this unit test basic math.cpp file that it automatically created. And I just want to do an assert uh, r equal. And you can hit control space to get uh, some autocomplete and see everything here. And let's just do a basic add. Let's get a r equal 4 and the add function that we created uh, with 2 and 2. So yeah, let's just make sure that comes back as we want. And as you can see, it's red and confused. It doesn't understand it. Uh, that's because we need to link the library. And to do that, we just go to our unit test basic math and go to add reference. And the reference we want to add is our math stuff static library. We're back to here and it still doesn't quite understand this add. It says it's undefined and do we really want to include a CPP? No, no, that sounds like a terrible idea. We want to include a header with these functions normally. Because if the only way we can get to these functions or see them is by including a CPP, that's not very good for a static library. What header do you include, or should it automatically do it based on the linker? It won't automatically do it based on the linker because that's at compile time. So there's no good header to include by default when you when you just use Visual Studio's default setup. So let's just make a header file for now, and we're gonna call this math stuff.h so it's going to match with this cpp file and there it is this mass stuff is basically going to have nothing in it so we're going to just cut all that and put it up here in the header we want an object to be for it to be able to compile into and that is going to be this here we just need to include that header could even do it in the pch if we include math stuff here. So we could even get rid of this altogether. Yeah, let's just get rid of, uh, yeah, let's do a delete. Let's get rid of the CPP altogether. We've already got a CPP. We really only need one. Now that we have it defined in an H, and I don't think we want these multiple times. We just want it in our framework, or in, our, in this one as well. So we'll do include math stuff. And now it should compile into the pre-compiled CPP. Okay, let's see if that works. Let's see if it's happy. We still got this, this add function, but now we have a proper header to include. And that is this math stuff header. You know what, let's, let's do something a little fancy. It's to link to it, it's gonna to have to go back a directory and then in the math stuff and math stuff.h. We can make that a little cleaner. I mean, that'll work. That'll be fine. As you can see, it's now happy. But you can make that a little cleaner by putting the includes, putting it on the includes as well in this VCC directories. You could basically just say, okay, let's start with the solution directory. And then it already has a slash. And then we want that stuff folder. And now it should be a little easier to include because we can just do it like so. Think I'm a jigger. All right, so now when we go up to test and run test, it still doesn't let us. Why doesn't it let us? This should be fine now. Let's see if our test builds successfully. It seems to, so we should be able to do it now. Let's go into our test explorer. It's now seeing them. I don't know why it took so long, but I had to go into the test explorer for it to like do the scan, but now this is set up. So that's a little obscure, something that people might get stuck on. How do you run your test when you're when this is grayed out? 
yeah I can see people running into that and it looks like you just got to go into this test explorer first and then you can even do it from here run all tests let's go ahead and run it and we should get a new outcome and it passed so our basic addition from our static library is working fine and now you can add to these tests and change them up as much as you want so we'll call this first one add tests we'll just rename it and if we want to make another test method I just did a copy there with selecting highlighting it hit hidden control D um, we'll just call this one add the test method add and subtract and we can run as many little r equals and asserts in there as we want so we'll do a subtract here 2 minus 2 should be 0 and there we go we probably need to do a new compile for this to be happy let's just do a build does not take two arguments. What? Did I get something wrong? I must have got something wrong in this math stuff library. Oh, these uh these words are interacting with the namespace and bugging out. So I can't name this subtract because it thinks I'm talking about this function. And same with this add. So this actually highlights a point about these uh about your libraries and you should have them in some sort of namespace space so you don't get all those collisions. So we'll call this namespace. Well, math is also a very common one, so maybe I'll call it something else. It's like just math stuff, I guess. And we'll just encapsulate that. There we go. Now that they're in a namespace, this should be a little bit happier because it's not going to be so confused, but we do have to scope these to the namespace here where we're actually wanting the functions. And now it's happy because it doesn't think that these are the functions. We can actually give them those basic names. Let's go ahead and run these tests again. So now our little test thing up there actually is uh, running, working fine. It says not run. Why not run them? Okay, let's click it again. I must have not clicked it. I think I must have went to the Just Explorer, but it looks like it passes on both of those. And now we could add as many tests as we want. We could change things up and see if it fails. So we could do something that is just wrong and assert that it's never four. You know, we can do whatever in our test. You can have as many tests as you want. And usually when you're testing, you generally want to try to cover all the given scenarios that could possibly happen with your code. In math, that's very large. So you might just do like a large case a really small case and a couple in between or something like that and just confirm that those all work so it's often good to have one that presses pushes the limit in either direction and just see how far you can go but anyway that's how you do it let me know if you have any questions um, I'm trying to think of anything that I might need to say that could be important but I think I've covered the majority of it I think it's pretty obvious how to expand these I could literally just make more functions like divide, just make associated tests for them, uh, like so. By two should be one. And of course, we got to go design this function because right now it's a minus. And uh, that's a terrible one to test with, to be honest, because uh, division's pretty. Uh, different in C++ in case you didn't know you get the remand remainder or the modulo factor um, so this of course if it would if there was a fraction it would just probably floor it I don't even know depends what it feels like doing or yeah it probably depends on the compiler I haven't tested that recently but we're not going to get into that that's a, that's another thing this is all about how to make these tests I think you guys get it so now if we ran this test we'd get the result of our divide in there as well and if you want to do more of these tests you can just keep adding them and building that reference so just add another project another native test and this way you could have tests for different areas uh, unit tests yeah two is fine so you can basically make a bunch of different tests and run certain ones and all that stuff you can just manage it all in one big project and it's it's kind of cool 
Okay, so yeah, so it would be the same thing with the second one. I'm sure you guys have got it by now. I'm just going to do this as an outro. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like if you like this video and subscribe. It does help a lot as we're trying to win the YouTube war. I don't know what that means, but uh, yeah, every, everything does mean a lot to me, so I do really appreciate it. And it was... But you might have a test for another library. You can have multiple libraries all within your project. You can have multiple tests. You can have multiple executables. Just as possible with Linux and your own custom setup with make files and stuff. Because um, that's kind of how I learned. But just being able to do it all within an editor and it all working generally pretty good is very nice. Very, very excellent for development in general. So that's why I think it's important to make these videos and show the basics. If you've ever heard of test-driven development, that's kind of what this is about too. You make the tests and then you build the code to pass all the tests and then in theory you have all the functions you need for what you're trying to do. Pretty cool, right? Assert R, well, I'll just, we'll just do a not equal or something, two and three. Uh, is not equal not a thing are not equal okay so there we go we can run our second one we can build it do essentially the same thing tests run all tests and we get this unit test and this unit test so there we go and they're both passing obviously because it's a uh, very straightforward stuff and it all seems to be working well Peace out, you guys. Stay safe out there. All right. See you guys in the next episode. And uh, peace out.